Their story is one of perseverance, dedication and an unwavering commitment to building a brighter future. Their legacy is not just a part of our history, but a living testament to the strength and diversity and the power of unity. Welcome to this episode of My Community. I'm sure with McCaskey as always, I'm pleased that you have joined us. In this episode, we continue to celebrate the rich tapestry of Barbadian heritage as woven through the descendants of the East Indians who first arrived here in Barbados in the early 1900s. These pioneers came with little more than hope, determination, and a desire to build a better life. Through resilience and hard work, they filled vital needs in the Barbadian society and proceeded to become members, integral members of our community. Our guest will share the inspiring story of his family's contribution, their enduring legacy, and the values that have been passed down through generations. It is a narrative of endurance, wisdom, and the spirit of collaboration that has helped shape our nation. He begins by speaking of his birthplace and his genealogy. I was born, I believe, in Brighton area, from what I was told from my parents. You know. uh, my father, uh, at that time, I was told, was among the first Indians who came to Barbados. And we were doing some research, and we found out that actually in 1937, my father, uh, uh, there are four brothers, but then my grandfather had married like twice. So from his first marriage, we had a gentleman, Jeevat Ram Thani, and that would have been in 1937 that he came here, as I was told, you know. And after a couple of months or so, or within that year, he was not well, and then he had to go back. And then one of my father's brother, which was D. Dalastani, and for information, the brothers were known as D. S. A. D. A. N. A. and R. A. So S. A. was Sajram Thani, D. A. was Dalastani, N. A. was Nutrimal Thani, and R. A. was Radhakishan Thani, which was my father. So. Um, DA, as I, as I refer to him as DA, he came to, to, give, to, to take over from Jeevat Ram because he was not well, and that would have been in 1937. So it looks like, as we are learning now, that 1937 was when maybe the first Tannis came here, uh, maybe what I would believe as the first Indians who came here from India, and this would have been before the separation. 1937 was when they had a lot of riots in India. I believe that's when they decided to move from place to place. At that time, Barbados was a British colony. So it was not, it was not difficult to move from one British colony to the next. There was no issues of immigration or things like that. You know. So they came here and they established a business, import-export business. Uh, the eldest brother was, uh, at that time was S.A. Thani. And I think he was stationed in Japan. So he was supplying us with the goods in Barbados and in the Caribbean, whatever. And it was, that was how it actually started. So when I came to know about it after, of course, I was born in Barbados in 51, as I said, and I started to hear about it, it was as if I was believing in that. That's where my father came. But he actually may have come earlier, before, uh, within that period between 1937 and 1940, 47 or 49, or even 50, because my elder brother was born in uh, Barbados, and he was born in 1950. Uh, my elder sister was born in India, and she was born in Pakistan, so it would have been maybe before the Pakistan separation. You know. We're going to a little bit here and there, you know, going forward and backward, but that is where I think. I have um, my brothers and sisters would be, I had two sisters, uh, one has passed away, and I had three brothers, two have passed away. Uh, my eldest brother, people will know him as Prakash. He was the one who established uh, the Tanishu shop, the well-known Tanishu shop. He was the one who established all of that and made that, what name that was. But again, going back before that, I remember at a young age when, uh, when I was helping my father in the business, right? Now we are looking at it from, you're looking at it, we're talking together here in this building, but right opposite this building, this is the 
uh, Royal Shop into what was known to be White Lima before. Opposite was, is now the bank. But before that bank was Canadian Imperial Bank. And that bank was demolished and then CIBC built a new bank there. Next to Canadian Imperial Bank was Tanya Brothers. And that was the business that I knew that was established at that time. So it would have been in the late uh, 60s, late 50s, early 60s that I remember those things. Because at 51 I was born, I didn't remember too much, you know. And so that was the first store that I remember that my parents had. And it was called Tanya Brothers Bombay Bazaar. All right. And I know that all the brothers were around here. Uh, when this thing happened, actually, uh, DA, SA, DA, NA, RA were migrating. Uh, DA, NA, SA, uh, RA came here. Then DA went to Guyana to establish over there. NA and RA, my, brother, my father stayed here. Then NA went to Trinidad to try over there, but he didn't like it there. So he came back to Barbados. So within that period of time that we're talking about, was only uh, our NA and RA in Barbados. Uh, DA was in Guyana then, he established in Guyana, and SA remained in Japan for a while, where he was sending the products for us to establish business. He eventually also left Japan and came and settled down in Guyana. So SA and DA were in Guyana, NA and RA were in Barbados. So that is where we sort of like started the business. I think that for what I can remember, we shifted from Brighton to Belleville. Yeah, what would be at George Street at that time. And we had a, parents had a house there, and I grew up there. But more than that, I remember being in Bank Hall. We had a house in Bank Hall, Main Road. Uh, the house is still there. Uh, New Crystal Ball is the name of the house, it's still there. And I remember that part because Hurricane Janet was around that time, and I remember seeing Hurricane Janet with the palings flying off and things like that. So I was around that time. I will have been about five years, uh, five years, yeah, about five years old at that time. And I remember that. I remember seeing the wind flying here and the open windows and people running on the streets trying to protect themselves and all that. But what I remember most was the governor's flying in the air, you know. That's what I remember most <laughs> at that time. Bang Hall was, was like what, I mean, it is, I hate to say it that way, but it looks more deteriorated now than it was in those years. We had neighbors which we knew very well. I think Mr. Knight was commissioner of police at that time. He was living next door to us. And there was further up the street, there was a person who supplied milk, fresh milk, fresh cow milk. Every morning we would go collect our milk, uh, or bring home, have it boiled and whatever else. So those kind of things were there. What people will talk about today when you talk about going back and back in time and you ask people from districts and different villages, you know, how things were. We went through the same process. We didn't have bicycles, so we used uh, what you would call make a little roller and, you know. We did all those things. I mean, we made our own toys also. You know, we made things that we can play with. I used to play with the, the, with the people in that area. We were very bicycled. Whatever bicycles they had, we had a hill, right? I was over there. I even went to church in that area at a, at a very young age. I went to a Christian church. Well, well, the priest saw us outside playing. He says, come inside, guys. You're going to have to learn. Start to have to start the school. So we went there. You know. After that, we followed our own, my family followed the own Indian religion. We were Hindus. So uh, in terms of whether, like what we know today as Radha Swami or Sai Baba as a religion, right? Hindus also had Guru Nanak, right? I would, uh, you call it Guru Nanak, right? Uh, and those were the three things that we knew about. Radha Swami came later, much later. So we will go to those kind of uh, prayers that my parents will hold, or my uncle, the eldest of, not the eldest, uh, Mr. D.A. from the Four Brothers, he used to hold special religious uh, meetings for us as, on Sundays. So we will make sure that all the children of the community in the Tani family particularly will come to this place and he will, he will talk about discourses of the religion and what we should do, how we should be here ourselves, what are our practices that we should follow. He will give us all of those different kind of guidelines, you know. And that's how we started to learn about our culture, our religion, and things like that, you know. Then later, uh, it was more like my father let us choose what we wanted to do, right? All of us actually chose to be Hindus and you know, whatever. My eldest brother, though, he chose to become a Jehovah Witness after being very old. He then realized that he felt that he wanted to be 
Christian, so he chose Jehovah Witness, you know. But that be, may he will still come to us. He will not attend many of the functions because of religion, but he will still come and be part of something afterwards, right? He will always and he will always ask questions also of our religion, so he will get to know like both sides, you know. Uh, he he will not actually just give up on the religion. He was still interested in knowing what was happening, you know? But he did have to follow the principles of being a Christian and Jehovah's Witness, you know, like that. I also became, I also followed uh, Sain Baba. I don't know if you know the religion called Sain Baba, which is the, the gentleman with that hair on his head <laughs> over there. Right, we followed that religion because our, my next uncle, Nathani, he started doing that, what we call prayers and satsang, every Thursday. As I, I, that was the official day, how you have Sunday, and that day was Thursday. And he will have the entire Muslim community come there for what we would call singing, how you sing hymns, and then there may be a small lecture. So every day we would, I, I went through that part as well. And then when I got married, the same thing continued, you know. And then I became more closer and closer to being part of that group of what we call Sain Baba uh, uh, organization. We became the Sain Baba organization, we became part of that. You know? I remember leaving Bank Hall I think around, as I said, maybe the age of 10, 11, somewhere around there, we left Bank Hall and we came to Welch's, which is Welch's uh, there by Mylar's Hill, bottom of Mylar's Hill in the post office. At that corner, we came to that house. My father bought that house. And we moved in there. And again, everything was around that time when probably we had TV started to come to Barbados. We had a black and white TV. So that was around that time when we moved in to the Welch's house. And we all lived in that house. My sister, my brothers, all five of us and my parents, we lived in that house. And my grandmother, who used to come and go from Guyana, she would also come and spend a couple of months with us. Uh, and her, she would spend a couple of months with her other son, which was Enetani, and he lived in Kingston Flats, which was a little further up on the same road, uh, Welch's, but on the left-hand side, uh, going towards my house. So they, she used to live there as well. So. Family life, we had basic thing. We had we played cricket with uh, some of the guys in our area, uh, football and those things we didn't know about. But we just played cricket. We would go to the beaches on weekends and like our family was then. Let my father will take the family. Every year we'll go and around December we will go to Bashiwa and rent a, a guest house there and stay there for a couple of days for the holidays. We will go to the beaches in Barbados. Basically, that was our life. We didn't go rambling here, rambling there, like, oh, you know, we just stayed home, or we'll go for drives, or we'll go for beaches on weekends. Well, we had, uh, in the area that we were in, uh, which was, I say, opposite us, but at the back, were the Odell family. Uh, I think it was Frank Odell, if I'm not remember, or Ian Holden. Or, what was the Odell family was there. And then we had another Odell family who lived inside one of the gaps of Welch's. And Mr. Peter Odell, uh, his father, he lives there. Uh, Peter Odell used to live in that one as well. And next to that was the Zephyrins. So those are the ones I remember because we were very close to all three of them. They used to come over by our place, or we used to go by their place, and that's where we play cricket, you know, with them. So that is the family that we knew basically in that area. I went to school in, Bel in the Bang Hall area. I remember that school, but just going to school, don't remember the name and all, I was just going to school there. But when I reached the age of about, I think, 9, 10, I, we then went to Barbados Academy uh, in, uh, that will be near Country Road, going up, uh, coming from town, and then you're going to, is it, by going towards Bank Hall. Country Road is on to your right, and that's straight right, I don't remember what the road was, but anyway. We went to a school, Barbara's Academy was there, and the principal there was Mr. Rudder. I don't remember his first name, but Mr. Rudder was his principal. And after, we, we were there for quite a while, but then I believe the school had to close. I don't remember what it was, but the school had to close. A lot of, uh, we were up to about four, four and fifth form in that school. But I think I left, school, I left from there in maybe second form when the school closed. So we had to do like sit another, sort of a simple exam and we were transferred from Barbara's Academy to Modern High School. Modern High School is on Roebuck Street, which is now ICBL, you know. 
we were there and we went from class one. I went up to class three, three plus I think it was, and then I left school at that, at that age. And that was at the age of 17 when I left school. Well, in those days, we didn't have television. We didn't have anything like entertainment like that. So we will have to be like helping out in the family. Uh, usually after school and on Saturdays, we will come to help in the business. On Prince William Henry Street, where uh, Tanya Brothers Bombay Bazaar was established, which was next to Woolworth, because Woolworth was there. I remember being in Woolworth, so Woolworth was there. You know, we will come on a weekend, Saturday, and on. The after school, and we will help in the business. Either help sell, or help put up goods, or bring this from here and put that there, you know, things like that. We will just be part of the business. We will be there because we had nowhere else to go. So at school, and come, at, come to the store and do help the parents say whatever, you know, that they needed help in. And we picked up learning certain things from the business of what my father was doing, what we were buying, you know, we were selling garments, we were sell, selling uh, brassware from India. Uh, stuff from Japan, things like that, you know. So this is where we got integrated into the business part. So I shifted from Barber's Academy to Modern High School. I did all my secondary education there. I did my uh, GCE exams there. I didn't get any certificates, but that's as far as I reached because then I was needed in the, in the family's business. So I joined the business at the age of 17. At that time, business, of course, was growing. Things have changed a lot from the time I saw it there to now. Uh, we still had that store, I believe. We still had that store. I know we, yeah, I think we still had that store for a little while. Then I believe we also established a store in Swan Street, which was, before it was called Everybody's, I think now is Adam and Sons. We were in that store for a short while. I remember that much. And then we had to close there. Then we got another store in Swan Street, which was uh, next to, at that time, was Battle Shoe Store. Battle Shoe Store was there, so we were next to that. And that property was sold, and so we also had to leave that store. But when I joined the business in, uh, in 17, when I was 17, I, I knew that I told my father that I didn't really want to be in all of this, selling the shoes and things like that. So when we had, when we had that store, when I was 17, I remember we also had a store in Broad Street. And that was called Tots and Teens, Stanley Brothers Tots and Teens. We had Evans Arcade there. We had William Fogarty there. So it was Evans Arcade, which we were inside there. And next to Evans Arcade was William Fogarty. Between that, there was that road, believe, I believe it's now called Shepherd Street. And then Cave Shepherd now came. And you know, in that time that we were there, and maybe in the first year or so that I was there, we had a fire. I think we had a big fire in Bridgetown, where almost a lot of the buildings on Broad Street were caught fire. And we were part of that. We were in that building. The fire burned, so we were gone. So William Fogarty, Evans R.K. had gone. And Nicholas House, was, which is now Nicholas House, that building also burnt, and that's gone. Uh, I think those were the two or the three big stores. Even Cave Shepherd burnt now also. So from Cave Shepherd going all the way like that, Cave Shepherd, Evans Arcade, William Fogarty, and where Nicholas House is, those were the properties that burned, that left Bridgetown looking like there was no business there. Yeah. So we had to obviously didn't have that shop, and then we had a shop in Swan Street. But while that was happening, we had a, a shopping center called, it was called a shopping center called Pandora's. That was established around that time. I'm not getting the years properly, but it was in that, in that space of time. Because it will have to be in the late 60s or mid 60s that that happened. And we had a Pandora shopping center there. And we had shops and we were renting out to other people. We had our own store there, so my brother was in one of those shops uh, while I was in another shop, you know. So it remained like that until we built ourselves back up, you know. So we had all of that in Bay Street and Swan Street. Was, those were the two stores that we had continuing. Then along came when my father and my father's brother, Die, they bought the property in Bridge Street, Bridge of Corner and Travolta and Marhill Street, opposite the financial Treasury building. They bought that building between the two of them, and then they separated the building to two so that DA had his part and my father had his part. And we had that business there also under the same name. At the time, the name on the property was called Atma House. Atma House meaning my grandfather's name, rather uh, Atmaram Tani. That was his name, Atmaram, my grandfather's name. So that was the name on the building. 
and we had a business there. That building also had a fire. We had to build it back, and that's where Tanny Shoe Shop and another business called Town Country Fashions was established by my brother, uh, Prakash. And then he changed uh, the, shoe sh the garments back to the full shoes, and it remained a Tanny Shoe Shop. I was in Broad Street I, when that fire happened, and I went to uh, Bay Street when we were shopping center. I was in a store in Swan Street. But in 74, I got married. And in 78, uh, I had my first, uh, my first child, my daughter, uh, my wife Nisha, my daughter Lavina. And when my daughter was born, I started to say, well, look, I can't be doing what I'm doing now because I was managing or I was at the shop in Pandora's. And at that time, it became quite, very quiet because Bridgetown was being rebuilt. Cape Shepherd was there, Norman Center came up. This building here in Nicholas House came up, you know. So, so Broad Street became back a little bit more vibrant, you know. So I'm realizing that now I'm married and I have a child, I have to start thinking about my future, you know. I told my father, we got to do something. We just can't stick around here like that, you know. So I was offered a spot in Nicholas House. Uh, Mr. Isaac Nicholas, uh, I approached him, and he offered me the spot there, which was next to Collins. So the Nicholas House was divided into like four or five shops. So the one closest to Collins was the one that I took. And I think we established that in 1978. Yeah, 1978, somewhere around there. And that was when the Royal Shop and, yeah, the Royal Shop was first established because it was called the Royal Shop from that time. So from that time in 1978 till now, uh, Royal Shop is here. We moved from there for about, after about 10 years or just before 10 years, because every two years he was raising the rent. So, you know, the rent, the rent at that time was $3,500 for a shop on Broad Street. And at that time, it was still considered too high. <laughs> so we, we said that, you know, raising, raising the rent means that at some point in time, I can't pay that rent. So the discussion with the family and my father, I think in between that time, also my son was born. Well, we had a shop person, then my son was born afterwards, right? So discussing with my father, he said, well, let's go and approach him and let's see what he says. And although there was discussion that the rent was too high, we said, if you don't take the chance now, we will not know, you know. So we took the chance. We went, got the shop, we paid the rent. And my father established with the bank the, the credit facilities and all that are needed, you know. And we started there uh, with souvenirs, T-shirts, all the different things like that. Because I never liked the, the local business, local trade of cloth and shoes and all of those things. I never really liked that. I liked to be something with where I was dealing with ornaments and things like that. I liked that. That was like my calling, you know. So I had china and crystal, jewelry, watches, souvenirs, T-shirts, all those things they had all in one store. And over the years doing that, and I saw business change. Uh, I realized that all those lines that I'm carrying now can't, can't continue because I was not strong enough in those lines. Like China and Crystal, I could not compete with Harrison's and Cape Shepherd. They had a huge department for that, and so I, I thought that no point in me trying to do something that I can. So we gradually uh, reduced those lines and established more into jewelry. And that was really what I had like. So we established more into jewelry, we changed the outlook of the shop, we developed it into what would be known as a modern style jewelry store, uh, which can be compared with any other jewelry store. Uh, in the islands, you know, taking that, that sort of international look, you know. So we established that for a while uh, in that store over there. As in, when we had to move from there, then we came, we took this property here, which was known as Wai de Lima, and we came and established here in the late or mid 80s. So we established here, we brought over everything here, and we established one side of the store. Or when we had to, we had to buy the whole property. Because we thought now that instead of paying that kind of rent, let's buy a property, and what we will pay in rent, we'll pay in mortgage. So the bank agreed with us and all of those things, and we went from there. So we established that, and my brother then, he established a shoe store on the other half. So he was doing one half, I was taking the other half, and we were supporting the mortgage from both of us, you know, paying the mortgage. We've just experienced a fascinating lesson in the genesis growth and evolution of a family business here in Barbados as recounted by a Barbadian of East Indian descent. 
Their story is a testament to the enduring spirit of entrepreneurship and cultural integration that has enriched our island. But this contribution of this remarkable family extends far beyond their business endeavors. Let us discuss another aspect of their legacy, their profound involvement in charitable organizations that has had a tremendous impact on our community. Their dedication to giving not only reflects their deep-rooted value, but also highlights their commitment to improving the lives of their fellow Barbadians. Cheers to how these charitable efforts continue to benefit our people and strengthen the social fabric of our nation. I actually was Rotary from 2008 till now. Uh, I became president of the club in 2017. And well, it's a sort of a timing that we have this, this uh, interview that I was pinned today for being uh, what we call a Paul Harris fellow for my contribution to Rotary. For this will be the eighth or ninth time they say that this, this pin that I'm wearing now, the one with the red, is a symbol of my contribution to Rotary and to my uh, philanthropy, if you call it, you know, and to service service of Barbados. Uh, yeah, I was in the I was a member of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce from the time this business started in, as I said, in the late seventies. The 70s, and I remember a member of the Chamber of Commerce from that time until uh, 2020, 2021, 22, somewhere around there. I served nearly 40, 40 plus years in the Chamber. I became, I'm a member, I was a part of the Chamber of Commerce, what was called the duty free uh, sector. And they had a special division in the Chamber of Commerce to handle the duty free operations in, in Barbados. We were part, I was part of that. I was chair of the committee the duty free committee, duty free and retail distribution committee. I was chair for about four years or something like that. Uh, I feel that I have given a lot. I've taken part in a lot of things that, that I can say that I'm proud to be doing what I have done for Barbados, played my part. And I've always felt that Barbados was my home. Very good indeed. Understanding the fundamental role that one ought to play in society, giving back to the community of people that has supported it your business endeavors. I certainly hope that through this presentation, you now have a greater appreciation of the remarkable contribution of the East Indian community here in Barbados. Until next week at the same time, let us continue to honor the spirit of community that binds us all together. I'm Sherwood Mikowski. In the meantime, take good care of yourself and look out for the interests of your neighbors. Mm -hmm.